If you're not paying attention to what I'm saying, would you know what I'm talking? No. Really. No. That's so with every aspect of life, isn't it? Yeah. If you're not paying attention to it, you don't know what you're eating, you don't know what you're breathing, you don't know what's happening, most people will not notice the fragrance of the flowers or uh, anything, they're just walking through like rocks <laughs> or uh, let me say a bull because they want to, you know, a bull is worshipped in the stock market. <laughs> so, it's a evolutionary fallback. If you walk like a bull or a bear, you, it's an evolutionary fallback. You evolved to be a human being taking millions of years, now you don't want to fall back. To be human means, what is unique about a human being is, we do the same things what the other animals do. It is just that all that the animal can do, we do the same things, but we can do it consciously. That's a big difference. And doing anything consciously will not come if the, you don't have sufficient attention towards things that you do or things that you do not do. Especially things that you do not do, you must have absolute attention towards those, otherwise they'll creep into you <laughs> So this attention deficiency syndrome has happened because people's idea of education is information. Right now, the whole idea of human education system has become heaping you with information. The more information you heap upon on any mind or let's say starting from childhood, the more he will develop aversion to attention. Because without knowing anything, information gives you a false feeling that you know everything. This has become a fashion now. Today, if you're invited for a dinner party, you google out information about the hundred billion galaxies, they've all been numbered and named and all that, okay? Yeah. That… Uh, that 566 BZ, yeah. that galaxy, yeah. you know? About that you know some information. You google out, get these two sentences out and go to the dinner party. Whoever talks to you, they say, how are you? Hey, do you know about this galaxy, which is uh, a trillion my, uh, light years away, which is a BB whatever? And you talk about it, everybody thinks you're smart. There's a whole problem with the world right now. We're considering information, we're mistaking information for intelligence. An entrepreneur or anybody who wants to navigate through any situation needs intelligence, not just information. Information may be useful on the side, but it is intelligence which will allow you to navigate through a particular situation in a unique way, mm. not the way somebody else is doing. We are mistaking information for intelligence. Once you heap yourself with too much information, now attention is a serious problem. Yeah. Once you have no attention, once you have no ability to hold your attention, you have lost your ability to access your intelligence also. You will just churn out the information from memory. There's a beautiful incident, you heard of uh, Andrew Carnegie. When Andrew Carnegie started his enterprise, in a short span of time, he became so super successful and made so much money, at that time, okay, this is not the age of uh, Google or Facebook or Twitter where in two years they become multi-billionaires and all those… those days people had to set up manufacturing this and that and make money which would take decades or generations. So this guy made so much money in a short span of time, people suspected, the US government suspected he's doing some malpractice. They set up a, a Senate investigation committee. So they questioned him in every way possible and they found nothing wrong with his business. Then they asked, how do you manage to make so much money and be so successful? Mm. So Andrew Carnegie said something very simple. See, I can keep my mind focused on something for five minutes at a stretch. Five minutes. Can any of you do it? All the senators. They thought, what's the problem with five minutes? And he set up an experiment. They tried to keep their attention, they couldn't keep it for 
a few seconds, one moment here, one moment there, this is the fate of most human beings. So then he said, you should not be running United States. So, human ability, there's something called as chitta. There's a different… see, in English language, mind is mind. Largely you're considering the memory part of your mind as mind. Right. In the yogic system, there are four main aspects of the mind. I'll not go into the detail, but the memory part of the mind is of least importance. It's the chitta, which is connected with the consciousness, which is most important. If you find a shape for your chitta, that shape will manifest always, because it's empowered by life-making material which you… which for lack of words we're using the word consciousness, that which is the basis of life. Once your mind is yoked to that, then what shape your mind takes? Mind is like a cloud, you can make it any shape. You can make it godlike, you can make it a devil out of it, you can make a pig out of it, you can make whatever out of it, you know? It's a nebulous thing. So what shape you give to your chitta? it will always manifest in the world because it's… it's empowered by life-making energy behind it. So that is the most important aspect of the mind, not the memory. Memory is important to handle the material aspects. After all, an entrepreneur may be just trying to handle material. It's fine, but I would like an entrepreneur's life to become an exciting adventure where he, his process of exploring new possibilities become truly new possibilities in his experience, not just economic possibilities. And that possibility is there in an entrepreneur's life that he can turn his entrepreneurship into a spiritual possibility and a spiritual growth or growth of the being itself, which I feel everybody should explore, that's why we're trying to bring a spiritual element. Success will come easy more than anything because success will come easy not because of any magic, simply because you function at your full potential. If you want to… you know there is… Uh, in schools they have something called as a three-legged race. Yeah. Though you get three legs, you run slower. With two legs, you would run faster, mm. isn't it? <laughs> With three legs, you must become more efficient in numbers if you just simply look at it. But this is how it is. With more information, more information means something that is not yours, you attach it to your memory and identify yourself with it. The more you do that, the less effective you become. But right now, our whole idea of education is information and there is internet. A twelve-year-old child knows what is the name of the galaxy up there, a trillion light years away, which is not good for him. Because this is not knowledge, this is not of any usefulness, this is only for boastfulness. And above all, it'll take away your ability to pay attention. Because the basis of attention is you realize that you do not know even a speck in the universe properly. In its entirety, you do not even know an atom. That's why you can pay attention. If you think, I know this, you cannot pay attention. It's the arrogance of information which will bring you attention deficiency. The disciple Janak went to the master Astavakra and asked him, O oh master, how can I attain liberation? How can I become free of all limitations? The master Astavakra replied, Yadi deham prithikritya chitivishram yateshtasi adhunaiva sukhi shanto Bandhamukto Bhavishyasi. The master said, 
if you detach yourself from your body if you detach yourself from your mind and recognize your real nature as pure consciousness you will then at once be free from the terrible bondage of body and mind and become supremely blissful at this very moment just see just try to understand the significance of what the master astavakra said he didn't say that you would become free in the future after a certain period of time no he didn't say that he said just dissociate just disidentify from your body and mind and you will at once become free and happy see that is the key to the treasure that exist within you all that is the key to the treasure which is you yourself you are that treasure but because of this strong identification with body and mind you don't feel inclined to inquire within yourself about the reality that exist within this little limited body mind complex the moment you start throwing the light of inquiry within yourself by asking within yourself who i really am am i really this body which keeps changing every fraction of a second am i really this mind which fluctuates every bit of a second am i really these thoughts and emotions when you start inquiring within yourself like this then the gap happens between this body mind complex and the real you but you need to be persistent in your efforts remember the only thing that prevents you from knowing the truth of your divine infinite nature is your unwillingness to inquire within yourself see truth is always present you are always the divine infinite being you are always the divine infinite being and that you will always be but this ignorance about your true nature can come to an end only when you want to know the truth until you make that decision to know yourself beyond this body mind complex this ignorance will continue to exist you will have to consciously work upon this spiritual evolution is a conscious work in the external world the forms evolved and you have the most perfect form which is the human form it cannot evolve further nature has done its work it cannot evolve the human form further now from here it's totally your responsibility it's completely in your hands now whether you want to remain bound by the limitations of this human form or you want to go beyond it and experience your boundless infinite nature it's completely up to you it's totally your call even the greatest spiritual master cannot make you an enlightened being he can at the most show you the way but you will have to consciously work upon it you have to now take the responsibility upon your shoulders and start working towards your spiritual evolution if you really remain sincere on the spiritual path then that day is not far when you will realize the truth of these teachings when you will know yourself as you truly are as the divine infinite being pervading the entire cosmos see all the spiritual practices all the meditations that you do are nothing but the preparation for that moment when you will experience yourself beyond this body mind complex and this preparation is you know absolutely necessary because without this preparation if you get to know yourself then it will completely freak you out it it can completely dismantle your whole physical system so you really need to prepare yourself and soon that auspicious moment will arrive when you will experience yourself as you truly are beyond the body 
beyond the mind as the blissful infinite being.